<laughs> Amaretto but risotto, that's what we ate. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has embarrassing moments, but the fact is, we're normal people. I'm cringing at mine already! I hate myself, let's be honest. I hate myself. I'm the most embarrassing person. We'll start off tame. I was in the science room in school, and I was in year seven. There were a group of year 11s there, and I thought I was just fucking great. <laughs> And this is when I look like a little boy as well, and I was just like, yeah, what of it? And this girl was like, oh, excuse me, your seven's not allowed in this, in this room? And I was like, excuse me? And she went, uh, do you want to like, fuck off? And I went, excuse me, I'm not going anywhere. And she went, nothing she, she, went, do, she went, uh, who the fuck are you? And I went, I'm Rose Dix, pleased to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> and this girl looked at me and just went, Yeah, but who, who in their right mind in year seven would put their hand out as an extension to meet someone to be a dick? I think that's great. Thank you. One time, um, me and a friend were meant, uh, we won, I actually won tickets on the radio to go to the Birmingham Clothes Show. Um, and oh my god, I know this story. <laughs> I'm going to tell it in detail. Um, yeah, so we won tickets to go to the Birmingham Club show and we were going to get up really early the next day so we had to like get a train and then maybe a bus and like we wanted to get there early to like get all the, get all the stuff, you know, because it sells out so you've got to get there yeah. early. Went out the night before and a night out and it was supposed to be a few drinks but uh, we ended up breaking into a, a private school, like boarding school house and staying the night and we drank a lot of stuff including someone made me down a pint of port which I'd never drank before and I'll never drink again excuse me my friend went off with a guy and I kept ringing her and ringing her but her phone was in her bag which was in the same room as me so I couldn't get hold of her so we didn't have the early night we planned we got absolutely wrecked and we went home about six in the morning had about two hours sleep and got up about eight and, and went to the Birmingham Clove show so obviously I was feeling very worse for wear, having downed a pint of port on top of all my gin and tonics and beers and everything I drank that the day before, and no sleep, I was really tired, and we were like, I was like, oh, I'm really hungry, um, so we went and bought a sandwich, and mine was like a sort of spicy chicken sandwich, wrong decision, I was just about to buy these pair of awesome David and Goliath <gasps> pyjamas, and we were still in this really long queue, and I grabbed my friend and went, I'm gonna shit myself, just like that. And she went, "What? No, you're not." And I went, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna shit myself. I'm shaking myself. I'm gonna shit myself." And I fucking shat myself in front of everyone at the Birmingham Clove Show. Shit was coming out my bum. I tell as many people as possible so that you kind of life. like desensitize. And now myself. I don't care because yeah. everyone knows. Like yeah. I don't care I, if I can laugh at myself. It's fine. Have you have you ever told someone that you love them and then just be like, oh? No, never. It's fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> no, it's fine. So you've never done that? No. You've never been like, oh, I'm in love with you. Do you love me back? No. Does that, that happen to girls like you? No. <laughs> it happens Don't be to silly. people like me. I once told, I didn't mean to. This is probably one of my biggest, most embarrassing, life ruining moments. I'm going to tell it. So basically, um, when I was in art college, I felt really in love with this girl who was mm. straight. I fell so in love with her. And she was my first love, right? And um, She was like your um, unrequited love. Oh, God, it was difficult. And um, I accidentally sent a text to the wrong person, and it went to her instead. And um, it Did basically... You say, oh, my God, I love her so much. Yeah. And it, you accidentally sent it to her. Yeah. And then the next day, it caught... No, she texted me back like, oh... Cats out of the bag, and I was like, ha ha, I'll see you tomorrow. And then I went in, and she looked great that day. I think she happened to do herself up on purpose, so I felt like a fat little dick, and she was just perfect. And then I went in, and I was like, <laughs> and she was like, yeah. Oh, I said, so did everyone know as well? Yeah, everyone knew, and um, and then it was just horrible for like. 
four months and then we got over it and it was and then, fine and then you got yeah. yeah but that was difficult because it not only was embarrassing but what was more embarrassing was the fact that i thought that there might have been a chance but there wasn't um similar story but not as bad because hold I was... on i need a minute <laughs> you don't care about Anel though. I, I'm still ashamed of myself. Yeah, but you don't care about it. No, but everybody who's asked me that question, have you ever fallen in love with a straight girl? Yes, I have. And was it unrequited? Yes, it was. Does it still hurt this very day? Yes, it does. Am I embarrassed? Did she have a boyfriend at the time? Yes. So why? Because she broke up with him. She broke up with him and she was single and looking to mingle. <laughs> I was always single back then. And I was like, okay, we're in the same bed together. This could go somewhere. Didn't. She played you a bit, though. Yes, she Let's did. Let's be honest. She, yes, you she did. She was a bit by curious this one. Yes, you were. Because what straight girl gets in bed with someone who's like, huh, touch my pubes, look at my vagina. Yeah! I stand by everything I said and did. Yeah. I hope you're more embarrassed about the situation than I am. I'm sure she is. Okay, I'm done. I have a similar embarrassing story to that one. Okay. Um, but not as bad, I don't think. Okay. Um, I used to really fancy this boy at school who was younger than me, actually. He was, like, in the year below. Mm -hmm. And um, I really fancied him. And it was Valentine's Day coming up. And my mum was involved in everything. And I decided to make him um, a Valentine's Day card telling him that I really liked him. And I had the amazing idea. I had the amazing idea of doing it with love hearts. So like I wrote that is an like, amazing idea. <laughs> so like I stuck the love hearts on to make the message. Oh. I love you. Obviously you are beautiful or whatever the love hearts yes. are. And I wrote this big long message. Yes. And I took it into school and my mum and stepdad helped me make it so they all knew. And I took it into school and then it was lunchtime. But he, but obviously it was Valentine's Day and he had loads of girls around him. And he was in the year below. So like I didn't even know who he was like talking to. And I said to one, and I said to one of my friends, like, oh, I made him this card, but I'm not gonna give it him. I'm I'm way too shy, I can't do it. And my friend was like, What? You've made it, you've gotta go, you've gotta give it to him. And I was like, No, no, I've changed my mind, I'm not gonna give it him. And she snatched it out of my hands, ran over there and went, Rosie Sport made you this. And I what looked over, bitch. looked over, and he had all these girls around him. He was like, Oh, what the fuck? The word and like threw it on the floor and all the girls were laughing and he was like oh I'm really spoiled and I was just like so you have experienced unrequited love it wasn't love it was like I was like in year eight it was a crush were you ever in bed together no actually yes Rosie you were in year eight <laughs> standards come on we, we we played mummy and daddy did you ever play? Oh my god, I just thought of another one. Did you ever used to play Mummy and Daddy? Though? No. That is a genuine Did straight girl, young, <laughs> young game. Let's play Mummy and Daddy and have a baby. Okay. Did you ever play Doctor with your friends? Yes. I had this really good friend called Ben and we were literally five, four or five. And we had... <gasps> is this the box? Oh. We had a kissing box. But one time he whacked out his penis and I was like... <laughs> the end of the story. <laughs> everybody, okay, I've knew, got... everybody knew what happened in that box, apart from the penis story. Okay, I've got a really... Ugh, what's your parents knew? You went in there and kissed? Yeah. That you thought it was sweet. I could have got pregnant. I did a way worse one than that. Were you old and did you sleep with them? No, I didn't sleep with anyone, but one time I went up to a male teacher and ran my hand all down his back to his ass and he turned around in front of everybody. It was just outside the canteen. They were at lunchtime, loads of people there. And he was like, don't fucking touch me! And I was like, oh, why did I think that was appropriate? <laughs> Okay, I've got another one. What was my other one? Oh, my other one, right. I joined A-level drama, and this is when I had chronic OCD and I wasn't very confident. And we had to say one interesting fact about ourselves to like to the group to sort of break the ice. I thought, fuck, I can't think of anything interesting about me. And because I was a year older than everybody else, because I had like so many years of therapy and like awful time, I joined late. So everybody was like, oh, you know, I once starred in an advert briefly. I've got a cameo in this and this. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. And someone was like, yeah, my great, great grandfather played for some amazing football team and I was like great that's amazing and it came to me and I said I'm 17 and they went yeah I went yeah I'm, I'm a year older than all of you oh that is a fail <laughs> <laughs> and what I should have said is um 
Yeah, there's nothing interesting about you, babe. You touched my nipple. <laughs> that was interesting. That was interesting. <laughs> you could have said I'm Rose Dix and I'm a lesbian. I oh, should have just gone. Rose Dix, pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> In the night, Rosie's got this ridiculous fear that the, the woman from The Grudge is going to get her. No, in, I have in whatever a, situation. No, she, I have a fear that she lives in the attic in the bathroom. Yeah, well, she does. Yeah, I'm sure she does. I'm sure Every she does. night, without fail, when Rosie needs a wee, she goes, Rose, are you awake? Are you awake? And I'm like, she's like, are you awake? Well, I'm like, yeah, I'm awake now. Yeah, I'm awake. I'm now. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I am. And she's like, can you come with me? Need a wee wee. I'm like, Rosie, our bedroom's here. The bathroom's there. It's literally out the door. You can literally practically see me from the shower, from the bed. And she was like, I'm scared. And I was like, oh, all right. So I got up, I go with her. I just stand there feeling awful. And she's just like, Okay. And I she need won't, my she... mummy with me. <laughs> she won't come downstairs either in the middle of the night. No. Or even... If it get, I'm fine in the day, if it gets dark and then I'm like, like Rose, why are you in the same room as me? <laughs> this is probably one of my most embarrassing because there's nothing I can do about it because it involves a celebrity. Well, you can't do anything about it anyway. Yeah, but this involves a celebrity. It's not like I can go and make it up to them or or try and save myself and recover. I know this never one. Again. I know this one. It's shame from the L word. Yes, it is. I know <laughs> you so well. I don't think you should be embarrassed. I just think what? you should have saved yourself and said something. Okay, basically. Rose pissed off Shane from the L word. <laughs> Severely. It wasn't that bad. But she still touched your ass in the photograph. Yeah, so. she did. That happened before, though. Oh, did it? The yeah. photograph was before. No, she, we, we got on fine. Right, Alicia Haley said how polite I was, which was great. But when it came to actually having something signed, the organisers at the event said, take one item only so i was like okay and they were selling the items there's a picture of like Alicia haley a picture of shane Man uh, kate monig and a picture of them both together but i only wanted the one of Alicia haley because it was a great picture so i was like well, I'll just well no you one. wanted both but she, they said take one yeah so exactly chose... but it was one so you photograph... chose right, you chose alice piazaki over shane yes so it was actually one photograph each rather than one for both so i could have just taken two pictures but i took one only took alice please so me. i approach kate renig and i'm like hey can you sign a picture please and it's just a picture of lisha haley and her sister was like this is a picture picture of lisha haley and i was like yeah and she was like Ugh. and kate renig was like and uh. she signed it and i was like <laughs> oh my god! I would have been like, oh, are we allowed? I would have been like, oh, am I allowed to? No, take a I didn't think that fast. I was like, I already pissed her off with the questions and answers because my question was such a dickhead question. Yeah, I'm I literally, went... I stood up in front of like 400, 500 people. I went microphone. So Kate, tell me, were you happy with the total lack of closure to your character and the absolutely appalling ending to season six? <laughs> and she went. No, I wasn't happy with it. I thought it was awful. And I was like, message received. Back to my seat. <laughs> Sometimes I hate you and every core of your being. <laughs> Why did I go? Why did I shit myself? <laughs> and stand in front of all these people and ask her if she was happy with how shit the season was. <laughs> yeah, but at least she agreed with you. If yeah, she'd she have been did. like, yeah, she was fine, you'd have been like, oh. I know, I would have been like, I'll have you know that your character lacked layers. Excuse me, I'm up here. <laughs> if someone came up to me, say we were at Ross Wegman, right? And someone got the microphone and went, So Rose, do you realise how shit your videos are becoming? I go, Do you want me to collapse? <laughs> uh, again. I was at the Hay Festival in 2002, I think it was, and it was when Bill Clinton and Alan Rickman were all there. And I met Bill Clinton, and the guy next to me said, Oh, hey, Bill, how's Monica? And I was like, Ooh. <laughs> Mum cannot be keep anything on the DL ever. Basically, Alan Rickman walks by, and my mum's in love with Alan Rickman, like, in love with him. And, and everyone was like, oh. And there's a few murmurings, you know, when a celebrity comes in and you don't want to look like a dick. There my mum was, standing on a wall. Hayden! Hayden! It's Alan Rickman! Hayden! Hayden! Do you know It's Alan Rickman! It's Alan Rickman! <laughs> so, that was our embarrassing history. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, everybody in the world has embarrassing moments. I don't know, don't care where you come from. Some are worse than others. Some will stay with you till you die. Some are worse than others. Bodily fluids. No, do you know what, the body Rosie? quickly. I would rather 
puke my guts up or shit in public than have that unrequited love situation. No, you wouldn't. No, I would. No, you wouldn't. You watch the uh, woman shitting herself in the pool and you wouldn't. Oh, fuck, that was awful. Mm. Yeah, but the unrequited love situation. Unrequited love situation. Yeah, but look what you've ended up with now. 